Don't worry, we are not here to put a damper on your holiday spirit, but once the holiday hangover has ended, it's going to be tax time. I'm Ivana Taylor, I'm the publisher of DIY Marketers and the host of Bizapalooza Chat, and today we're going to be handing out some year-end tax tips. We reached out into our community and I've got with me here Greg Zbilet, otherwise known as Tax Hacker on Twitter. Hi, Greg, and welcome to Bizapalooza Chat. Hi, thanks. I am so glad to have you. Now, I love your Twitter ID, Tax Hacker. Tell us about yourself. Why are you Tax Hacker? Um, you know, it was uh, uh, when I first joined Twitter, I was trying to think of, of what I could. Um, uh, use as a, as a memorable thing. My last name is, you know, too hard, as is, is, uh, uh, most people told me, including my better half, your name's too hard for people to spell correctly. Pick something easy. Um, so I was like, okay, fine. I thought, well, maybe I'll do tax guru. Um, and I, the first thing I did as I looked it up and it was taken. And the second thing is, as soon as I said that, about five people looked at me and said, oh, that's just obnoxious. Don't even use that name. <laughs> yeah, so it's a little uh, uh, what's presumptuous or whatever word you want to use a little too high you know, whatever um, so I poked around different names and um, and I thought well everybody's talking about hacking I thought this would be a good good name so I picked tax hacker um, it was kind of uh, whatever and actually it's got a really good response <clears throat> a really good response from people and um, uh, I don't have a huge following, but some of the people who do follow me, I, David Spade and Perry Gilpin follow me, so yay me. <laughs> yay. Well, you know, you have one of the better Twitter bios, especially in an area that most people find boring, intimidating, and so on and so forth, right? So, you know, I thought it would be fun to just go through some really quick year-end tax tips, especially for entrepreneurs. And with a name like Tax Hacker, I am sure you have some great ideas. <laughs> so, um, I guess the biggest thing uh, for everybody this year is the new Tax Act. And uh, uh, even here at my main firm of Singer, Burke, and Zimmer and, and Encino, we, uh, we have a running gag about how soon into any conversation with a client we'll get before we start talking about QBI, Qualified Business Income. And uh, that, I think, is going to have the biggest impact on small business owners. It doesn't matter what you do. If you are single and your income is under 157500 and it, or if you're married, filing joint, and it's under double that or 315000 It doesn't matter what you do. You get 20% of your qualified business income as a deduction. And that'll be on uh, the, presumably, because we don't have final forms yet, it'll be on the front page of the 1040. It'll be reductions to taxable income. So it will reduce your tax because your taxable income will drop by some amount of money. Um, and it will give you kind of a nice little break. Now, that's where the simple part ends. <laughs> because once you go above that, then you start running into something called an SSTB, a specified service trader business. If you're a lawyer, an accountant, a doctor, uh, architects and engineers got, got it pulled out of this, but there are a number of professions uh, and there's a catch-all sentence that says if your primary, uh, if your business is primarily based on the reputation or skill of, of a small group of people, um, these kind of uh, um, professions don't get the benefit of the QBI deduction once they go above 157.5 or 315, depending on how they're filing. So uh, as a lawyer or as an accountant, either one of my chosen professions, um, I don't get to deduct 20% of my QBI once I go over that. Um, there is a, uh, a phase out of 50 to $100,000, again, married or, or joint, married or single, um, and, and that uh, will phase down. But by the time I get to 207,000, it is completely zero. 
uh, and there's nothing more for me to do. And I just get nothing. So I was going to say this is if you're a professional mm -hmm. doctor, lawyer, these Accountants. people that you mentioned, accountant, right? right? Mm -hmm. You don't get this off the top benefit. What are you still doing? Uh, deductions and stuff, just like the old way. Sure. I mean, if they have a if they have a corporation, then obviously they can still deduct all their the relevant expenses. If they're self employed and they're filing Schedule C, they can still deduct their their expenses. Um, uh, my firm, uh, Singer Burke, we generally deal with people in the entertainment industry. Um, we have a number of, of actors and directors as clients, uh, several of whom you've probably heard of, uh, a number of writers and, and uh, uh, artists and such, uh, graphic artists, for example, some of whom have film contracts for the work they've done. Um, and so those people, uh, they still get to deduct some, maybe not all, um, but they are in performing arts and performing arts is an excluded area. So they're, they're kind of uh, screwed too, but there are certain things we can pull out. They generally will use a loan out corporation and, and that is basically an S corp. That's a pass through entity. And uh, the reason I bring that up is because if you are, a, if you're Tom Hanks, uh, Tom Hanks has Playtone, that's his loan out. And that's what Warner Brothers contracts with. They contract with Playtone. That's what I was going to ask you real quick, because I continue to be in these conversations. And I, even though uh, this is almost more of a startup conversation, but I've gotten into a conversation with a few people about these business entities like you've talked about, right? You've got, you could be a sole proprietor, which means that you're getting taxed off your social security number, right? Mm -hmm. Or a partner, which is like two sole proprietors, <laughs> right? Right. Or, or more. Or... You could be an LLC or an S corp. What's the difference between an LLC and an S corporation? Uh, on the federal tax side, an LLC doesn't exist. It, 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 the, the primary driver for LLC is liability protection. Um, if you are an individual, Tom Hanks forms his own LLC, uh, the IRS says, well, that's the sole proprietor and it gets filed on Schedule C. If Tom and Rita, his wife, Rita Wilson, file a, an LLC together, uh, that is taxed. Uh, well, that's, they're married. So let's say Tom Hanks and Brad Pitt decide to file an LLC together. Um, and so uh, that would be a partnership. And any time Anytime you, you are working with another person in a business for profit, you are in a partnership. Whether or not you have an agreement, you are in a partnership. So there's a whole set of laws. And if you're going to go into business with somebody, spend the money and talk to a lawyer. Uh, absolutely. You know? Like I, I actually fell into an S corporation. Uh, yeah. My company was formed uh, with a guy that was a CFO before. So he just like handled everything. <laughs> the yeah. lovely man, everything was great. He handled everything. And even after he went off and got a full-time job and I continued doing this, he handled my books for me. Nice. And then, uh, but I never, you know, I fell into it. Now I have a CPA and he does everything, right? Uh, but I, at first I was like, did I make a mistake? I even talked to my CPA, should I switch to an LLC? He's like, no, you're good. You know, the worst thing about an LLC I mean, the worst thing about an S corporation is that it helps to have someone do it for you. Well, and, 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 and uh, the other option then, uh, the IRS, like I said, if you're an LLC with two people, you're by default, you're a partnership, but you can elect to be treated as an S corp, or you can elect to be treated as a corporation or what accountants call a C corp based on the code section, uh, uh, chapter C, sub chapter C. Um, and the, the difference there is that partnerships and S-Corps both allow flow through of the income to the individual. Uh, S-Corp, you have to pay a reasonable salary. And S-Corp, you are, you are tied to the corporation documents. So if you and I are 50-50 are partners uh, and we form a, an LLC, we can elect to be a partnership 50-50 or we can elect to be an S-Corp. Profits and losses for the S-Corp flow 50-50. 
But let's say that you're lucky enough to be in an LLC with Tom Hanks. Cool. Yay, you. Uh, by the way, nice guy. I actually have met him. Um, but uh, Tom has a lot of income. And Tom wants losses because he doesn't want a lot of income because he has to pay a lot of tax. So Tom might say, listen, Ivana, let's do it this way. If the company loses money, it's all to me. I get 100% of the losses. You get nothing. If, it, if we make money, we split it 50-50. Um, and, and that's not an unusual arrangement when you have somebody who has a much higher net worth than somebody else. Um, but you can only do that with a partnership. You cannot do that with an escort. So that Why, will- How do you decide, Greg? I mean, people really are sitting there racking their brains, you know, if they're a small business owner, let's say they are a freelancer, a copywriter, a web designer, um, I don't even want to, I don't even know if like retailers, pizza shops, those types of folks, right? Main street businesses. Do you have some quick ways or quick ways to, uh, or tips on what you should be and why? No, because what, you, what should you be thinking about? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Unfortunately, it's really an individual person by person thing because if you're in a partnership and you're getting guaranteed payments, which is the partnership version of a salary, that's self-employment income. Uh, so you'll have to pay self-employment taxes. If you're in an S corporation, you can actually do payroll and have withholding. Um, and whether what you want or don't want really does fall back on your individual situation, which means you have to look at everything. You can't just look at the business and say, oh, I want to be this. Um, because that will have an impact later on down the road on other things. And so it's not always an easy answer. And everybody I know wants like, oh, tell me what I should be. And the answer is every lawyer's favorite answer, which is it depends. And, and it drives people crazy, but it, it's really one of these things where it's not one size fits all. There are some generic things you can say, well, you know, if you, if you elect to form, if you want to be a partnership, uh, and you don't elect to be a limited partnership and you don't elect to be an LLC, guess what? You are, lim you are liable for the debts of the partnership. So if one of the things you're worried about is, I really don't know Tom Hanks very well, and I don't know if he pays his bills on time or if he's one of these rich people who makes his money by stiffing people, and everybody's going to want to sue him, and all of a sudden they can't get to him or whatever, he's too well insulated. Who are they going to look to? You. So in those cases, you probably want liability protection. Um, I would say everybody should want liability protection. I mean, I'm a simple business, yeah. but you know, I do consulting. I work with brands. You just never know. And the last thing I would want is to have my family, um, you know, hit by something that happen probably unintentionally, right? But nonetheless, right? Stuff happens. You know, well, do you think that that should be everyone's primary concern? I mean, we're well, so egregious. Uh, liability protection comes with a little asterisk because the liability protection will protect you against certain things, but not others. So if you have an employee who uh, commits what's called an intentional tort, that's not necessarily going to protect you. The, live, the, the LLC format is not necessarily going to protect you because it doesn't protect against intentional torts. And to give you an example of that, battery and assault uh, are intentional torts. So there are certain things you won't be protected against. The way you protect against that is insurance. Um, so if your primary threats are tortious threats, an LLC form or business, uh, corporate form isn't really, it's going to be illusory. It's going to look nice, but it's not going to really protect you against those things. So again, this is why you spend the money to talk to a lawyer <laughs> to kind of, you know, flesh these things out to know what's the whole picture. Because again, you really have to look at the whole picture and see mm. what's, where, what's the type of business it is, where they're operating, whether or not they have international issues or potential international issues, because again, certain states and certain countries aren't going to recognize certain forms of business. 
So, you know, you have that consideration. If I go back a little bit to the entertainer side, like I said, Tom Hanks has a loan on corporation. If you are a, a grip, right, and the grips are the people who build the sets, if you are a grip, you can have a loan on corporation. There isn't a studio in the world that's going to deal with that corporation. They don't care. They're going to put you on W-2 payroll, and you're going to be an employee. Now, here's the catch. They're going to want you to bring all your own stuff, and they're going to pay you to rent your equipment. So you're going to have rental income, and you're going to have W-2 income. And under the old tax rules, what people would do, because some of that stuff, for example, I had a client who was a special effects guy. He had to rent trailers. Now, he had enough income coming in on his Schedule C that we wrote off all of those expenses, but some people don't. And what they were doing was they were putting it on Schedule A as unreimbursed employee business expenses. That went away at the end of 2017 with the new tax act. And so the IRS is going to be looking for people who didn't have Schedule C self-employment last year who suddenly have it this year. And especially if they had unreimbursed business expenses, they're gonna be looking at those and I would be not surprised to see people who are in those boats getting an audit notice to show how come you suddenly have a business? Or are you just trying to write things off that you couldn't write off anymore? So that is a hidden way that the tax act can affect you because it, you might wanna change the way you were doing things. Don't be surprised the IRS is looking out for those kinds of things. Uh, one of the comments I've made to, to several of my colleagues and I, when we sit around, shockingly, attorneys sit around and drink beer. Um, and, and when we sit around and drink beer, one of the comments I made uh, last month was, I wasn't surprised that the IRS didn't do anything or say anything on the new tax act. They let all of the people who are prognosticators and advisors come out with their versions of advice. And then they came out with proposed regulations that undid a large chunk of that. Or basically put up a roadblock to a lot of those. Um, for example, early on, one, there was one guy who uh, very well known in the estate industry who said, hey, listen, each trust is treated as an individual. Put your house in five different trusts. Each trust gets a $10,000 state and use local tax deduction. Now you can deduct 50,000 and you're not limited to 10. The proposed reg said, eh, 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 we are going to collapse all of those trusts into one and you get $10,000. So is your best advice right now for small business owners that they definitely need to seek professional advice? Yeah, and they really should be looking for people that are, that are experienced in talking about this or written about this or you know have some kind of background because the proposed regulations that came out in August were 184 pages. If they're wealthy enough to have uh, uh, an estate and have estate concerns, um, you know, your small business in this country, if you're $25 million, um, you may have five or $10 million estate and you may be saying, hmm, well, should I be giving more money? Those proposed regs actually just came out a couple of weeks ago. Um, so there's a lot of changes. There's going to be a lot more changes. And this is definitely one thing I would say, don't try and go alone on this. It's too easy to make a mistake. And even me as a professional, we're still trying to feel our way through this. And if I'm trying to figure this out and have a, you know, a lengthy discussions with the partners here on what constitutes performing arts, what constitutes QBI, can we put this into that and will that qualify? And the answers to a lot of these are, we don't know. And uh, we're not sure and there's a lot of gray. And again, going back to my colleagues, then I, I do a lot of speaking with the Beverly Hills Bar and the LA County Bar and so on, um, along with an a couple of attorneys from Venable who, who are also kind of on the circuit. Um, and, and we were at a, at a little mini conference a couple of weeks back and sitting around talking about this and we all agreed, you know, it's, it's a lot of gray and we are trying to play in the gray for as long as we can. And we expect that what's going to happen over the next 18 months to two years is there's gonna be a lot of audits, there's gonna be a lot of litigation, and there's gonna be a lot of definition redefining. We may be going back a year from now and changing returns we do now because the IRS comes out and says, 
we disagree and the court goes, yeah, the IRS is right. And then we have to go back and, and undo some of the things we did. So we to wrap telling, up, to wrap it up, Greg, yeah. tell me three things a small business owner, let's say that they're making less than a million dollars. What are three things they should be doing at year end? Uh, they should definitely be making sure that their books are up to date. And so that they can see where their income is. A lot of a uh, lot of small business owners keep sloppy books. Make sure your books are up to date. Make sure you have good records. Everything is tied together. Go see an accountant. Sit down with him and talk or her and talk about you know where your income is, what you're expecting. We've got two weeks left in the year. For us, the studios are are closing next week. We're not going to see any more income, so that's a plus for us. But most business owners aren't closing down for two weeks at the end of the year. So try and project what your income is going to be. If you haven't hit the $10,000 limit on state and local taxes, make a payment. If you make it before the end of the year, it's deductible this year. If you don't make it before the end of the year, it's not deductible until next year. Um, so do those, those two things. If you need it, go out and buy whatever equipment you need, provided, of course, you have the money for it. Remember that charges on a credit card are deductible in the year charged, not the year paid. So you can buy stuff on the credit card this year, pay for it in January, but you get the deduction this year. That's a, that's a common mistake people don't, they make. They take the write off the year they pay it. That's not the case. Also goes to medical expenses. So if you wanna squeeze in a doctor's appointment, the doctor isn't taking time off hopefully, that's another thing to do. And if you have flexible spending accounts, they expire at the end of the year. Get those bills and reimbursement requests in so that you don't lose that money because FSAs are use or lose it. You don't want to lose $1,000 if you don't have to. Greg, that was outstanding. Outstanding. <laughs> People are going to love that. And we got to head over to Twitter. Thank you so much for being with us today and putting, You're welcome. giving us something to think about at the end of the year. No problem. Thanks. Thank you for <laughs> inviting me. I appreciate it. Awesome. Hey.